Yes, sir. Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome to another video. We have quite a few interesting things to get into today, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So uh, first off, this morning's uh, jobless claims came in for the week ending in October 1st, and that number rose by 29,000 to 219,000. Uh, that's over the consensus of 203,000, uh, which means that more Americans uh, filed for unemployment benefits last week. Uh, this is the largest number in four months. Now, what's so interesting about this number is we actually get the actual jobs report tomorrow. And what's funny about that jobs report tomorrow is the market is actually cheering for that number to be bad, meaning they're cheering for the US to add less jobs than more jobs. Like basically they want unemployment to go up, you know? And the reason why is because if unemployment goes up, then the market is saying, okay, well maybe the Fed will pivot and get less aggressive uh, on the rate hikes, and that's what the market wants. So I know that's a little weird uh, that the market wants uh, uh, less jobs to be added. I know that that's very strange, but yeah, that's actually what the market is cheering for. The market wants <laughs> wants the economy to crack so the Fed can finally pivot. That's just how it goes. Uh, in other news, uh, the Minneapolis Federal Reserve Bank President Neil Kashkari uh, today said that the U.S. Central Bank has more work to do. Uh, on bringing down inflation and is quite a ways away from being able to pause this aggressive interest rate hikes. Now, you guys know what you're seeing here is a little bit of uh, I guess some people might call it groupthink. But what you're seeing is you're seeing an entire group of people in the Federal Reserve who all are with the Federal Reserve all saying the exact same thing, which, in my opinion, is good. They're all being hawkish. They're all on the same page. Uh, they're telling the markets there is no pivot that's going to happen. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> uh, you also got a note from Bank of America. Now, this note from Bank of America is very interesting. It says right here, clients are asking if we foresee an imminent uh, shift from the Fed giving other central banks actions in the sharp uh, risk asset moves. And Bank of America here is saying that we think that these concerns are misplaced and that the Fed's job is still far from over. However, Bank of America also said this in their note. The Fed will keep hiking until the labor market cracks. So basically what Bank of America is saying is they actually do think that the Fed will pivot once the labor market cracks, which makes tomorrow's job report even more important. I mean, listen, seriously, guys, tomorrow's job report can literally swing the market. It can, it can really, it, it's going to be some volatility, folks. That's all I can really say. It's going to be some volatility. Uh, what else do we have? We have the IMF chief, uh, Kristalina, said today that the central banks must stay the course in their battle uh, against inflation, even amid growing risk of a recession worldwide. So I got to read that again so people understand. This is the IMF chief saying that even though there is growing risk of a worldwide global recession, uh, she still thinks the central banks must stay the course and continue being aggressive. And the reason why is because she says right here, inflation it remains still stubborn and still persistent. And she even told AFP in an interview that the risk of not doing enough is bigger than the risk of doing too much. I actually agree. We can't keep kicking this can down the road. At some point, we got to just sit down and face the music. OK, people. Uh, what was also interesting is you also had another Fed governor, a newer one named Lisa Cook. Now, this is actually her first speech ever as Fed governor, and she was hawkish. She said supply chains uh, cannot assume that improvement will be steady. Inflation risk are skewed to the upside. She said that inflation dynamics may have changed in a persistent way. But overall, she still thinks that the Fed has to stick to their plan of hiking rates aggressively in order to bring down inflation. The same old talk we've been hearing for the Fed in recent weeks. In other news, uh-oh, I just got the alert on my phone. Says right here, alert from CNBC, Twitter opposes Musk motion to delay trial, citing threat of further mischief and delay. Yeah, I don't blame you, Twitter. You're probably smart for that one. Uh, Twitter will not take yes for an answer to filing. Yeah, so the drama continues with the Elon Musk and the, uh, the uh, whole thing about buying Twitter, which doesn't surprise me. The guy's a freaking clown. What do you expect? But more importantly, more important news, here's what we got right here. Fed Governor Christopher Waller pushes back against the idea of a premature Fed policy pivot due to market instability. I tried to tell you. Says right here, let me be clear that this is not something I'm considering or believed to be a very likely development. Now, again, obviously we're hearing all these Fed speakers say this. We need to hear this from Jerome Powell. And we already have 
but we need to hear it again. <laughs> okay. That's what we need to hear. So, uh, yeah, that's my update for you guys. Uh, again, I understand that things are looking okay right now. The market, depending on what the jobs data uh, ends up being tomorrow, uh, the market could end up being bullish and we could have a short term bear market rally. But make no mistake, I'm still bearish, I'm still following my strategy. People are free to do what they want. But for me, I'm still bearish. So there you guys have it. And also, don't forget, guys. Well, never mind. I'm not going to say it. There you guys have it. That'll go ahead and conclude today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. See you guys in the next one.